mics are on. Uh, Mr. Webb and Mr. Rosansky, take your seats, please. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, Madam uh, Clerk, will you call the roll, please? The record will reflect that all members of council are present. Mr. City Attorney, is there a closed session report? Yes, Mr. Mayor, there are a closed session report. The council considered all of the matters reflected on the open session agenda in closed session. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, with respect to A, 2A, on regarding eminent domain regarding back pay court the council on a vote of six to one authorized the filing of eminent domain action and instructed our office to see to it that we proceed to mediation in that matter if agreed to by the other side it was a six one vote council member Selich voting no uh, with respect to the third matter which is involving city of Newport Beach versus Leeson it's, which is actually city of Newport Beach versus Leeson and Lou the council authorized the mayor to execute a settlement agreement with Defendant Liu, uh, resolving that matter in its entirety as to Defendant Liu, but not with respect to Mr. Leeson. Um, and that was a 7-0 vote, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Mayor Pro Tem Michael Hinn, which will be followed by the invocation by Mr. Frank Carpenter. Please join me in our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you please bow your heads and join me in an invocation? Dear Lord, we come before you. We thank you for this fair city, for these dedicated public servants, for these uh, concerned citizens that are here tonight. And we thank you for the beauty we're surrounded with and uh, how you have blessed us with prosperity. We ask you your blessing upon this evening tonight. Give us wisdom. Give us patience with one another. Uh, give us insight as we uh, guide Newport Beach into the future. We just thank you for this time, and we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> the uh, first presentation tonight uh, will be uh, from Gary Tegel and Justin Power from the Utilities Department. Please come forward, gentlemen. Council members and city manager and staff. My name is Gary Teagle and I work in the utilities department. Uh, as you may know, myself and, and Justin Power here, who's also in the utilities department, well, we're mobilized in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. Uh, in addition to working as a city water quality coordinator, uh, I'm a senior chief hall technician in the Naval Reserves. And the past 11 months we both spent uh, with the Naval Expeditionary Support Group Juliet Battalion in Kuwait and Iraq. Uh, many people thank me for my service and for my sacrifice and what people don't often realize is that not only have I sacrificed but my family. I'd like to publicly thank my wife who's here to support me tonight again. And you know for her encouragement and also our workplace who suffers in our absence uh, while we're deployed overseas. Uh, you know, as a token of my appreciation to the city um, for supporting me and my family, uh, I'd like to present the mayor and the city manager with a flag I flew on the 4th of July last year while serving as a company chief in Balad, Iraq. And, and I just thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. And also, Justin Power, I'd like to say a couple things first before we get the presentation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Equipment, equipment oper operator, first class, uh, United States Navy uh, Reserve. Also, um, I just on behalf of myself uh, and my family, uh, three little ones, and my wife Jen, we just want to thank you so much. Uh, specifically, you know, Utilities Yard and HR for supporting us while we were over there. Um, George Murdoch, um, our director uh, for the Utilities Yard, did nothing but bend over backwards while we were gone. 
Um, we know in the absence of, of our time, uh, they use a lot of those in support. Um, I run the CCTV operator camera, um, and I know that they did a demonstration, and we were able to show some of the council members uh, how that truck worked. Um, as you saw, Craig Auger and uh, Dustin Bridside did a wonderful job while I was gone, um, and I just want to thank you uh, for that. And we also, uh, Senior mm -hmm. Chief and myself, um, this is an actual um, ESRG, the employer support, uh, the Garden Reserve. It's, it's uh, to present, it's a national certification to present to employers who support uh, their members and their employees that are in the Garden Reserve during their absence and uh, recognition. So thank you again for that. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to, to offer my thanks too to Gary. I, I know that I've I worked with him uh, before I retired, and and he's done a uh, uh, a superb job in his job here. But uh, it's it takes a, a a lot of courage to do what these gentlemen are doing. How many other Teagles are in the naval uh, are are training to get up to what you're doing? <coughs> I know we had uh, uh, an event over at the Mariners uh, Park uh, a while back in which uh, the Sea Cadets uh, presented colors to, to us uh, and uh, did a very fine job. This is when Gary was, uh, I believe, over in, in Iraq. Anyway, thank you. I, I would just add my thanks to guys. Uh, you guys uh, really make the city proud uh, for what you're doing over there, and we're proud to have you as part of the city family. Thank you for coming by and making these presentations tonight. Uh, notice to the public. The city provides a yellow sign-in card to assist in the preparation of the minutes. The completion of the card is not required in order to address the council. Speakers must limit comments to five minutes on agenda items. The council has a discretion to extend or shorten the time limit on agenda or non-agenda items. As a courtesy, please turn cell phones off or set them in the silent mode. Now is the time for council announcements or matters which council members would like placed on a future agenda for discussion, action, or report. Uh, thank you. Before we, we do that, I, there may be some of you here in the audience who are here to speak on the uh, Hogue Development Agreement, item S26. The, the recommendation there, and I believe this is what's going to happen, is this is going to be continued until July 27. So in, in uh, respect of your time, if you're here for that and would like to come back on the 27th when we actually discuss this, uh, that would be a, probably a more appropriate time, although you're welcome to stay until the end and talk about it when it comes up if that's what you prefer to do. Uh, Councilmember Selich. I have nothing. Councilmember Rosansky. Nothing, thank you. Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hand. Uh, two quick things. Um, the Nautical Museum um, held a grand opening for their latest exhibit called Sea of Adventure. And uh, the mayor and I were able to attend a, uh, an event promoting that and celebrating that on last Friday. It was very nice. I encourage all of our residents and visitors alike to visit the Nautical Museum. It's a very interesting place that's got a strong future, I think, uh, as an important part of Balboa Village. Secondly, uh, another peninsula-related item. Um, we are pursuing our vision of a family-friendly, fun Fourth of July on the peninsula, just like it's celebrated everywhere else in the city of Newport Beach. And we're taking the first step toward that uh, this coming forth. Uh, there will be a, uh, a zone, a safety zone established. It'll be a little smaller and a little shorter in duration this year. And um, uh, we hope that that will help. Uh, we'll also be coupling that with some very proactive police work in advance of the 4th of July, especially with uh, those few residents on the peninsula that like to have blowout parties on the 4th. And, um, 
we're going to be advising them that, that we've got a little different attitude about that this year. And so we hope we're going to take a very positive step forward toward having uh, the kind of Fourth of July on the peninsula that we're able to have fun and celebrate everywhere else in the city. Thanks. Thank you. Councilmember Day. Uh, yes, during the past six months, I've been out in the community more than usual in an effort to identify uh, people's concerns and what they're thinking about these days. And the, what I came across is the number one um, concern is, is police protection. And as Chief Lumen uh, hands the baton over to our new chief, um, what I did want to let my constituents know is, you know, Chief Lumen came here because there were issues and because of his leadership and because the men and women of the police department have the character to move on and focus on the future that a number of accomplishments have taken place. That violent crime is actually down in Newport Beach by 1.5 percent. Uh, part two crimes, which are not, which are nonviolent ones, are also down. So we have a decrease in the crime rate in all crimes. We've increased the number of arrests, which means that we're taking the bad guys out of the community. We've updated under Chief Lumen's leadership updated the emergency response system. We've developed a critical incident manual to handle various incidents that could take place. Under Chief Lumen's leadership, developed a windshield survey, which identifies critical facilities in an earthquake so we can quickly get an overall assessment of damage. There's been a new uh, manual implemented called the Lexapol, and that was uh, released on April 1st, uh, no joke. and. Uh, we also have daily uh, training bulletins that share some aspect of the manual. Uh, Chief Lumen, uh, with the cooperation of the men and women at the police department, changed the workplace for the better, uh, resolved all issues associated with conflicts on promotional processes. Uh, we have now testing in place for all ranks, and we have current lists in place. We also have a unified uh, command staff and consistency in what they're talking to people about. And we even they even established a Facebook site, so they now have, uh, they've made more friends. Uh, we've implemented many, uh, the department has implemented many best practices. There's a sergeant's log with a daily update that's emailed to the chief, so the chief is constantly on top of what's going on, and their budget is under control. So I really want to thank Chief Lumen for making a difference in this community, and the men and women of the police department who did the heavy lifting to make all that happen. And uh, the department's in a better place, um, and so is the community. So thank you so much. <laughs> Councilmember Gardner. You know, I'd like staff to come back with a proposal for a bicycle committee. The mission would be roughly to implement the proposals of the bicycle task force and also to act as a liaison in regional bicycle matters. Thank you. Councilmember Webb. Well, since uh, uh, Mike is, is discouraging uh, uh, his Fourth of July events to, or trying to downplay them a little bit, I'm going to give a plug for uh, the event that's going to occur a little farther inland. And uh, this is a, a parade that is uh, uh, similar in length to the Balboa Island Parade. It doesn't have nearly as many motorized vehicles because it's in, encouraging uh, bicycles that are, are uh, decorated uh, with flags and other Fourth of July uh, related celebrations. However, this particular event this year is going to be on the 3rd of the Jul July, which is Saturday, and I'm talking about the parade at Mariner's uh, Park, and it will start at the corner of Mariner's Drive and Commodore at uh, 1030 in the morning. Uh, if uh, you live in Newport Beach and can get your kids up that early and ready to go on a Saturday morning, it's a great fun time for the family as well as the kids to show off their bicycles with every imaginable uh, decoration possible. It's been going on, I think, now for 38 years. And, uh, uh, oh, by the way, I get to be Grand Marshal this year. <laughs> well deserved. I'm going to uh, see if I can get up there and take notes for when we have the parade like that on the Balboa Peninsula, Donna. <laughs> on um, 
June the 11th, I was privileged along with some of my colleagues to participate with the Chamber of Commerce uh, annual Citizen of the Year dinner honoring Ralph Rodheim for his uh, lifetime of service to the city of Newport Beach. It was a wonderful event. And I subsequently uh, left from there and went to Oklahoma City to participate in the United States Conference of Mayors uh, annual uh, meeting. Uh, on, on Sunday of that week, uh, the mayors from across the America uh, joined together at the, uh, at the Mutha building, at the memorial that was built for the survivors of, of the terrorist attack there, and had an opportunity to hear by, from the uh, survivor, who, one of the survivors who came through that blast, and also from uh, a woman who lost her sister there. Uh, there's a tree that grows on that site, and afterwards all of the mayors took an opportunity with a watering can to water uh, that tree as part of uh, a display of our resolve to uh, overcome terrorism in whatever form it strikes our country. It was a very moving uh, program. And the conference itself was also very interesting in terms of the many issues that are being confronted by mayors across, uh, across the country. Uh, last week, I uh, visited at Newport Coast Elementary School, which was uh, designated as a California Distinguished School. Uh, more than 1,200 uh, uh, parents uh, were there to celebrate with their students. Uh, and then this last Saturday, I held another Meet the Mayor session at Newport Shores. We had our biggest uh, turnout yet of more than uh, 15, 20 people who came to ask questions and offer ideas on the city. And uh, also on Saturday this week, we had uh, the Mariners Park uh, art sale. And uh, a great time was had by all. I think many of you saw that in the paper. I'm pleased to announce that coming up on Tuesday, June 29th, from 4.30 to 7, uh, in the Central Library Friends Room, will be an open house to review the Civic Center project. As that project has now taken shape and people are seeing uh, more and more uh, a tangible uh, a product of that, uh, of that site, both the library, the, uh, the art, uh, the city hall itself, the community room, the emergency operations center, the additional parking, uh, this is an opportunity to come and ask questions and see just how the, the project is developing, learn about its construction schedule. As many of you have seen, we're moving a tremendous amount of dirt from the site already. And that's moving forward with, uh, with great speed. OK, consent calendar. All matters listed under consent calendar, items 1 through 18, are considered by the council to be routine and will all be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. The council members have received detailed staff reports on each of the items recommending an action. There will be no separate discussion of these items prior to the time the council votes on the motion unless members of the council, staff, or the public request specific items to be discussed and or removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Members of the public who wish to discuss a consent calendar item should come forward to the lectern upon invitation by the mayor and state their name and item number. If the optional sign-in card has been completed, it should be placed in the box provided at the podium. Thank you. Does any member of the council have an item they would like to pull from the consent calendar? Councilmember Daigle. Uh, number 13. 13. Councilmember Gardner. Nothing. Nothing. Council Councilmember Webb. Councilmember Selich. I have none. Councilmember Rosansky. I, I see the art uh, exhibit up there. Is your staff playing that? I'm, I'm uh, just Mr. Pull Henwood. It. Oh. All right. Well, okay. you can pull it I'll pull it, I guess. Okay. okay. <laughs> Mr. Hen? Then that takes care of me. Okay. And I have no items. Staff, do we have any items to pull? A clarification on item 15, it doesn't need to be pulled, but there's a new project schedule that uh, if you approve that action, the new project schedule would be replace the one in the staff report. Okay. Does any member of the audience have any item that they would like to see pulled from the consent calendar? Okay. Seeing none, uh, is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'd uh, move that we uh, approve consent items 1 through 18. Except items 12 and 13 and noting the clarification on item 15 for the new project schedule attached. Second. Second. Please vote. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, thank you. Item 12. Mr. Rosansky. Um, I, yeah, I pulled it. I see the members of the Arts Commission here and uh, I think it's this agreement is worthwhile of some uh, explanation by the staff. It's one of the first, um, I guess, other than authorizing the movement of dirt, um, contracts that we're entering into with regard to the City Hall project. And um, I'd like to just have a small presentation about that. Thank and you, uh, Mr. Rosansky, Mayor and Council Members. I'll uh, go as far as I can, and we do have some additional experts in the room, including uh, Jana Barbieri, who helped uh, pull the staff report together. So this is an agreement between the city and OCMA, the Orange County Museum of Art, 
that would allow for a, a sculpture garden or, uh, at the new Civic Center Park project. And it involves the placement of both permanent art and uh, temporary art. The agreement itself explains how all that would work. Uh, one of the important things that actually Mayor Pro Tem wanted to talk about, and you may too, Mr. Rosansky, is the delineation between, well, let me back up a tiny bit. And that puts this in, in uh, the, the right characterization. The agreement says that the Orange County Museum of Art would have the exclusive ability to recommend art in a section of the park. And the council could always approve it or veto it and keep sending it back. And that allows arguably the council the, the authority to decide what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Um, so, but within a certain area of the park, the city council or, the, or could not uh, unilaterally place art in that section. Uh, within another section, the city council could. So um, that would bring your attention to the screen here in this blue line. And the blue line, to the left of the blue line is the Okma area. To the right of the blue line is the city area. And if you look at it and you're familiar with the project, that would mean the city area would be the area around the parking structure and the city hall, including the Civic Green, including all of the area around the library, and including the entryway uh, to the Civic Center project. The area here where the park begins to get more natural and indeed has specific places designated for art would indeed be under the recommendation control of OCMA. And that extends up into the northern parcel of the park too, which is off the screen to the left. And indeed, OCMA is looking at a couple of different folks to potentially have commissioned art there. Uh, James Terrell, and this would be the potential site for the Terrell piece if you're if you Google Mr. Terrell's name, he does this thing called a skybox, which is uh, pretty fascinating. Uh, that might be a site for that. And then uh, they're also discussing with Robert Irwin the concept of maybe a more garden-esque or ornate garden, um, including some sculptures there too. So with that, um, that's the proposal before you. And again, staff is prepared if you have questions or thoughts about that agreement. Mr. Kiff, in, in the review, and recommendation, would our Arts Commission have any part in uh, reviewing the recommendations from the museum before we got it so we'd have at least somebody at the city level to uh, uh, give us advice on some of these things? Um, I believe the way the system is set up is that OCMA would make a recommendation to the Arts Commission. The Arts Commission would uh, make a follow-up recommendation to you. So they would be okay, so, in the so we intermediary. Have somebody is kind of is a sounding board that knows a little bit more art, about art than perhaps the seven of us might. That's right. Okay, that's good. Mr. Hand. So, Dave, would you say then that although the uh, Orange County Museum of Art has a lot more square footage to place art on the overall site, that the area that the city has uh, original recommendation control over has probably as much value to the, be able to place art on their portion of it, even though it's not as much square footage, I suppose. Yes, Mr. Hen. Arguably, the city's controlled area is, will be the more trafficked area, the more uh, probably a more appropriate placement for the kind of art show that you might walk around in a small area versus the uh, concept to the uh, left of the line, the Oakma line is more art interspersed throughout a large uh, area of pathways and parkland. Mr. Selich. Um, Dave, we're going to be responsible for the, uh, for the maintenance of the, uh, the sculptures. Um, when those recommendations come to the council, is there going to be like a budget? And is that going to be part of the consideration that uh, how much it's going to cost to maintain these things on an ongoing basis? Yes. Let me. Uh, let me make a couple of comments because I was uh, privileged to work with, uh, with the museum to bring this uh, agreement to the council and I think this is a really exciting time for the city. We have the opportunity here uh, to use one of the most uh, prestigious uh, museums in Orange County, certainly in Southern California, and to take advantage of their extensive collection of, of um, museum quality art uh, to have it placed as part of our new Civic Center. That is such a quantum difference from cities who try to do this on their own or take stuff out of the closet and create public art. Uh, it, is a, it is a space that will have international recognition in terms of its significance. 
and we're able to do it in a public-private partnership that other than perhaps for the insurance costs and, and the cost of moving things around uh, is going to be for the most part borne either because it's by the museum, either because it's a museum piece on loan or through private contributions and fundraising from people who are animated and excited about the opportunity to participate in what I believe is going to be a tremendous uh, art venue. I want to take this opportunity, though, to give specific thanks to our Arts Commission, and I think almost all of the commissioners are present today, but particularly uh, Robin Grant and Bob Smith, who really helped conceptualize this idea and initially talked to the museum and sort of brought this idea into focus. And I have uh, tremendous confidence in our art uh, commissioners and uh, the role and the vision that they're going to play in making this a reality. I don't think there's any question in my mind that this is really going to enhance the site as both a visitor destination but also as an important public place in Newport Beach uh, that people are going to want to come and visit uh, frequently. Uh, the museum also does a significant uh, biennial exhibit of California artists, and we have the opportunity for this to be part of uh, the adjunct to the museum for that uh, biannual exhibit, which is, is going to be also another exciting opportunity. So it's a new thing for us. It's a new thing for them, and they took the same amount of time to sort of get comfortable with us as we're taking with them. But I think when it's all said and done, we're going to be very, very proud of uh, what we have uh, in this facility. Seeing no further comments, uh, I, will, uh, I will ask for public comment if anyone would like to come forward and speak on this matter. Okay, seeing none, I will move approval of the item. I'll second it. Okay, uh, please vote. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 13. I too would like to, to thank Robin Grant and uh, uh, Robert for, for just taking the lead and, and doing such a wonderful job of researching this process. And uh, I've, I've sat in on a number of meetings and, and I was just came away shaking my head saying, hey, this is going to be great for the city and, and it, it's really a wonderful opportunity to have an art in public places in, in uh, our library and I'm, I'm really excited to look forward to seeing this happen. Okay. Uh, item 13, Civic Center and Park Geotechnical Observations. Uh, Councilmember Dale, do you want us to make a brief sure. staff report on this or do you have a specific question? Well, this is question? a far uh, less uplifting item, okay. the geotech contract, <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, what I was noticing is it looks like nine firms applied and um, it would seem that perhaps four or five at least would be qualified to do the job. Would that be accurate? I mean, was there a number of firms that were qualified? There were several firms that were qualified. However, Leighton has the most experience with the project, and we did uh, sit down with Leighton and make sure that their, uh, their rates and their fees and charges were consistent with those other firms that were, that were qualified as well. Would you see any benefit in the future to bidding these out if you, we have four or five qualified firms to get a bid? Because when I was noticing, it seems like CW, CW Driver, they negotiate with Leighton, but then if there's additional cost savings, they get 25 cents on every dollar. Oh, they, don't, they, don't get any, they don't get anything out of this. This contract is with the city. This isn't included in the, uh, in the GMP. Okay. So, so Driver gets no, uh, no benefit from this contract. Uh, okay. And I, I think city attorney and myself are going to be bringing to you uh, a new F-14 policy, which I think will address a lot of your concerns uh, in the future. But uh, we did kind of handle this particular uh, consultant in, in that similar way, this, this process that we're going to be proposing to you. We did actually look at what the other, uh, the two top, actually there were three top. We asked for some costs for okay. three of the firms. And so we made sure that the, the, the uh, most qualified firm, which we chose as Leighton, uh, their fees were consistent with those other two firms. So we'll be proposing that new program to you uh, shortly, uh, a couple of meetings from now, I believe. Great. Wouldn't I this be that. considered a professional right. services contract also that uh, normally is not put out in yes. bid? Yeah, it's, it is, and it's a quality-based selection, but I think what we'll be proposing is a way to do quality-based selection, but also assure that we're getting the best market rates. So I, I think you're going to be pleased with the results, and we've worked it through, and we think we're consistent with the state laws. And I just wanted to, you used a, a technical legal word, bid, you, and to follow on what uh, Councilmember Webb had said, you don't, and 
and certainly are not required and it's not good practice to actually bid because when you say bidding it's like pre present sealed bids of what your overall cost mm -hmm. would be as we would for a construction contractor say for a project when you deal with professional services the best way to get the best dollars get the most qualified individuals to provide us numbers and compare them and then negotiate with the best person to achieve the best rate for folks which I believe is what the council stressed that they wish for us to do right. and it's our intention to bring that back next month if we can okay thank you in the audience who'd like to speak on this matter okay seeing none please vote motion carries unanimously uh, next item is oral reports from uh, City Council on committee activities councilmember Daigle uh, yes, our regular monthly meeting of the uh, Citizens Aviation Committee will take place next Monday, 8 a.m. at the Central Library. Um, the city does continue to work with John Wayne Airport uh, on the Duke 2 and trying to improve that uh, procedure to Duke 3. Uh, both the FAA and the, uh, the airport have acknowledged their shortcomings in Duke 2. Uh, Pilots from our community uh, did uh, participate in a meeting and provided input as to what they think a Duke uh, 3 ought to look like. Um, we don't have buy-in yet from the FAA on that, um, but we do have the airport now um, hiring a, a, a consultant from Georgia Tech. Apparently that's a real aeronautics uh, hub. So we're doing everything we can as a city to uh, try to get a procedure in place and. Um, that would be uh, something we will take up again on Monday. And there's two sides to the bay, and uh, uh, as we look at, at moving Duke 3 farther to the west, we're looking at making sure it's down the center of the bay and not farther into the neighborhoods on the west side of the bay, so that this is a very, very small gap to fill and try to get uh, uh, the paths down. And I know that we've had a lot of of concern from the bluff side, but I also have had a lot of concern from the westerly side of the bay in that uh, looking at, at some of the paths, uh, there seems to be uh, a number of regular overflights of, of the area on the westerly side of the bay that uh, we would like to see in the center of the bay too. So uh, it's being looked at from both sides and we're trying to to balance a very, very uh, uh, a tight situation and uh, try to be as fair as we can to everybody. Maybe you can arm wrestle and see which side yes. of the bay it goes on. <laughs> Council Member Gardner. I'll be glad to arm wrestle this. <laughs> um, the Environmental Quality Affairs Committee met and uh, considered an expansion of our smoking ordinance. We had a very good presentation. We had Gary Sherwin from Visit Newport, uh, a couple of students from Newport Harbor High School who are working on a smoking program there and someone from the American Lung Association as well as the county public health agency. And I think that uh, what will be presented will be something uh, that the council will be find very easy to accept, uh, ways to improve what we've learned uh, through our non-smoking on the beaches ordinance, the ways that we can improve that but also perhaps extend it to parks and uh, a few other public places but it won't be overly ambitious in terms of, as I remind them, in terms of cigars. You can still have your so you're smoking nights for those of you who like that sort of thing. It just requires a yeah. vacuum to suck all the Mr. Webb, nothing. Mr. Selich? I have nothing this evening. Mr. Rosansky? Nothing, thank you. Mr. Hand? Just one. Uh, the Technology Committee, which uh, the mayor formed uh, a few months back, um, has met now four times. And uh, I think we'll be coming back to council at the end of July with its recommendations on how to um, uh, reorganize the technology approach of the city and improve delivery of services and the efficiency with which we do that. And I'd have to say this is just another example of uh, what I think is very gratifying and amazing uh, to me that there is such a deep well of expertise in the citizenry of this city that is willing to volunteer their time. This is another example where we pulled together half a dozen experts in this field and uh, through a lot of time and hard work and some very able support by Tracy McCraner and especially Dan Matashevitz, uh, um, it's been a very good process so far and I think will yield uh, some 
good information and good strategy uh, suggestions. So very pleased with that, and I'll look forward to their report at the end of July. Thank you, and I have no items. Uh, we're now ready for public comments. Public comments are invited on non-agenda items generally considered to be within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. Speakers must limit comments to three minutes. Before speaking, please state your name for the record. Does anyone wish to come forward for public comments on items not on the agenda? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, do you want to speak on something not on the agenda or something on the agenda? No, come, you come speak at the podium. Well, is there? Hi, I apologize for not knowing it's not on the agenda. I had read something that it was. Well, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Let me. What specifically about water? It is on the. Okay, uh, my name is Casey Clark. I've been a resident for over too long, but uh, I have also been a lifeguard, junior lifeguard, and saved some people in the back bay by the big blue well. And at 6 o'clock when the lifeguards go off duty, sometimes there's a crossover, not intentionally, but some kids are still playing late in the night in the summer. And I had the experience of saving two little girls, which just couldn't swim back to shore. And I got very sick from the water and still have not been able to resolve that. I understand and I know I'm trying to reach under three minutes, but just bear with me. I know OCC has oceanographer class. There's a doctor. I'm asking for resources that you have. I have sort of a lot of information. I'd like to talk to someone other than at the council about how we could stop the leaching from the mulching into the Balboa portion of the bay, into the back bay. And so I'm here sort of asking for a referral I know there's a doctor involved, and um, I know other people have experienced infections also. So I really think this is a valuable piece that you've been working on. I see it. I see the dredging. I really appreciate it. Uh, unfortunately, I got hit, as some other people did, you know, with the bugs. But do you have a name or a place? Because I have tried private parties. Right, it has I, think, not I think Council Member Gardner has some ideas. For yeah, well, we do have a, a Coastal Bay Water Quality Committee that looks at this on a regular basis. As far as the, as the, the dunes area is concerned, <laughs> in the summer we go into diversion. So they're really most of the water that comes down there ends up not going into to that area. Uh, but I would suggest that, uh, that you come to one of our committees there because we have a lot of expertise. Uh, the county health, health agency usually has somebody there, and we could explore the issues there if you'd like. Okay, and if you could tell me sometime after the meeting when that is, I'd be glad to yeah, come. Yeah, you can just sure. go online, it's, but it's the second Thursday. So July 8th? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Or, or give Mr. Kiff's yeah, office a call and he'll take care of you. Okay, um, I would like to say that I do know that people are still getting sick, not just during the summer, from not just the dunes area, but the Balboa side. So. I really appreciate you guys going forward to dredge and work together sincerely, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other speakers? Okay, seeing none, we'll close public comment. Uh, item 19, public hearings. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, is it possible for us to combine these public hearings tonight, today? It is possible, certainly. On and the bids? It, we need to provide the public hearings. It needs to be clear that they're being provided for all the particular bids, but yes, it's possible. All right, what I'd like to do if, with the council's indulgence, unless there's any objection, is to combine items 19, 20, 21, and 22, which are the three business improvement districts. This is their uh, renewals and annual uh, hearings. Uh, anyone who would like to speak on any of the four of them can, can come forward. We'll vote on them separately. Uh, but let me open uh, the public uh, hearing for, uh, is there any staff report that's required, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kiff? No, as long as you've opened the public hearing, um, right. unless the council would want to hear more about the, the um, actual actions. Okay, well, the, the public hearing is open. Let me invite the public who might, uh, is there any need for a staff report? I don't see anybody saying they need one. I think we discussed it in the closed session, I mean the yeah. study session anyway. Precisely. So let me ask then for the public, if there's any member of the public who would like to come forward and speak before we vote. Mr. Mayor, may I just note that this, these are now the public hearing for those four bids, the Balboa Village Business Improvement District, the Marine Avenue Business Improvement District, the Corona Del Mar Business Improvement District, 
and the Newport Beach Restaurant Association Business, Business Improvement District. It's now the time and place for the public hearing to address the, re, the action regarding the bids for tonight. Thank you, and I see Ms. Bowden is here if there's any questions. Yes, I just wanted to add that staff has received no protests um, to any of the four Business Improvement District renewals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, see, public speakers, uh, going once, going twice. I'll move the item. Okay, uh, Ms. okay. we're going to do these in order. Mr. Rosansky has moved item 19 on Balboa. Mr. Uh, Webb is seconded. Please vote. Motion carries unanimously. Next item is for the Marine Avenue Business Moves Improvement item. District. Mr. Rosansky moves. Second. There's a second. Please vote. Carries unanimously. Third item is the Corona Del Mar bid. Uh, Move the item. Second. Please vote. Carries unanimously. Newport Beach Restaurant Association bid. Move the item. <laughs> Please vote. Isn't there a Laker game tonight? No. <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. All right. There we go. Who says we're not making government more efficient? Okay. Item 23. Code amendment to allow the change uh, from a front yard setback established on the districting map number 24 from 38 feet to 16 feet. Is there a staff report? Uh, Mr. Mayor, this again is a public hearing. Uh, Russ Bunum from the Planning Department is here if you have questions or would like a staff report. Uh, let me open the public hearing. Uh, I don't see anyone who is looking like they need a staff report. Is there any member of the public who would like to speak on this matter? Please come forward. Uh, my name is Joe Silvozo. Uh, I'm a resident of Corona Del Mar. I appear for you this evening as the president of the board of Irvine Terrace Community, Community Association and represent 384 residents. Uh, this issue became before our architectural committee and our board. It has unanimous, unanimous support. Uh, during those uh, hearings, we had no negative comments, and we ask uh, on behalf of the board that you pass this code amendment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other public comments? All right, seeing none, I'm going to uh, close the uh, public comment portion of the hearing. I move the action. Second. Seeing no discussion, please vote. The motion carries unanimously. All right, item 24, uh, diagnostic and interventional spinal care, 3501 Jamboree and 301 Bayview Circle. I'm going to open this public hearing as well. Is there a staff report? Mr. Mayor and Council, this may be an opportunity for a brief staff report because I think there has been a little bit more discussion about this project. All right. Let me invite the staff to come forward to make a report. Melinda Whalen, Planning Department. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, the applicant proposes an amendment to the Bayview Plan community to add outpatient outpatient surgery and medical office as permitted uses and to add a parking requirement of one per 200 square feet for such uses. A traffic study has been prepared pursuant to the traffic phasing ordinance for the proposed conversion of 38,759 square feet of existing general office and retail space to an outpatient surgical center within 3501 Jamboree Road and 301 Bayview Circle. The traffic study concluded that the project would not create any significant impact at any of the study intersections. Sufficient parking is provided on site for the proposed outpatient surgical center parked at one per 200 uh, square feet. And Therefore, staff recommends that the council introduce the draft ordinance approving PC amendment um, number PD 2010-004 and pass to a second reading on July 6th and adopt draft resolution finding that the traffic study is or complies with the traffic phasing ordinance. I'm available for any questions at this time. Are there any questions for staff? Ms. Carter. We received a letter from the Breakobs uh, on Baycrest Court. Can show me where that is in relationship to the project. It's in. It's within the uh, Bayview Plan Community. 
across um, a, across Bayview um, Parkway. Oh, over there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other uh, questions for staff? Uh, Council Member Daigle. No, I, I would note that the um, that the Planning Commission did uh, recommend this approval unanimously, and that the building is currently 73% vacant. So it's a real opportunity um, for some economic development, and I certainly appreciate SK Hart's uh, willingness to invest in Newport Beach and also to cooperate in our road uh, project up there. Very good. Yes, indeed. So I would move. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Okay. Motion and second. Is there anyone from the audience who would like to speak on this matter? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing portion of this matter. Bring it back to the council. Any other comments? Please vote. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, thank you. Item 25 is the appointments to the boards and commissions. Let me begin uh, on this item with a uh, with a comment. As uh, most of you know, we received a letter uh, from Planning Commissioner uh, Piotr this week. Uh, indicating uh, that he uh, has asked to be with uh, to withdraw from consideration for a, a full term appointment. However, because we are in the middle of doing the uh, zoning code, and that is before the planning commission, uh, I've talked to Mr. Piotr, and he has agreed to extend the term he currently has for one month to August 1st uh, to allow him to to uh, complete that work. I believe that's in the best interest of the city, so I would uh, move. But as we vote that we uh, we commence the planning commissioner's term on August 1st as opposed to July 1st to facilitate that. Okay. Well, well, before you do that, is, is there any Brown Act issue there that it wasn't noticed properly or something? No, your appointment is before you. That falls reasonably within the action the council could take, uh, and it's consistent with the act, consistent with the charter and all of your other regulations. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, is there a discussion on that? Is anybody from the audience wish to speak on that matter? All right, seeing none, then please vote. We're voting on extending the planning commission, or beginning the new planning commissioner's term on August 1st. Motion carries doing. unanimously. Okay, thank you. You have before you ballots for the various uh, boards and commissions. I know there are some candidates in the audience. Let me see if there's any uh, anybody who would like to speak on the matter. Uh, before we vote, okay. Seeing none, uh, we're going to a ballot. Uh, we have ballots before us. <clears throat> These will be tallied by the uh, city clerk, and if we're, there's a need for a second ballot, we will uh, vote again. While the, uh, while the ballots are being tabulated, let me just say that this, this round in particular, we had quite a few highly qualified candidates for all of these positions. And I want to thank all of you, before we announce the vote, who took the time to apply. It was a, a difficult ta a task for the subcommittee to evaluate everyone. And uh, they did that with great diligence. But we had marvelous candidates for all of these jobs. And uh, we truly appreciate the willingness of all of you to serve on behalf of the city. I would, I would just add one more thing to those that uh, do not actually get uh, voted in this evening to encourage all of these, all of those to continue to evidence interest in the city's boards and commissions and apply again. Uh, it sometimes takes more than one try and uh, there's lots of really good candidates. Okay, and I will be announcing these um, board or commission at a time. So the first is Board of Library Trustees. Council Member Selich votes for Jerry King. Councilmember Rosansky votes for Jerry King. Councilmember Webb, Jerry King. Councilmember Gardner, Jerry King. Councilmember Daigle, Gloria Alkire. Mayor Pro Tem Hen, Jerry King. Mayor Curry, Jerry King. Jerry King has been appointed. For City Arts Commission, 
Council Member Selich votes for Gilbert Lasky. Council Member Rosansky, Gilbert Lasky. Council Member Webb, Gilbert Lasky. Council Member Gardner, Gilbert Lasky. Council Member Daigle, Gilbert Lasky. Mayor Pro Tem Hen, Gilbert Lasky. And Mayor Curry, Gilbert Lasky. So Gilbert Lasky has been appointed to the City Arts Commission. For Civil Service Board, Council Member Selich, Douglas Coulter. Council Member Rosansky, Douglas Coulter. Council Member Webb, Douglas Coulter. Council Member Gardner, Douglas Coulter. Council Member Daigle, Douglas Coulter. Mayor Pro Tem Hen, Douglas Coulter. Mayor Curry, Douglas Coulter. Douglas Coulter has been appointed to Civil Service Board. For Harbor Commission, the council members vote for three. Council Member Selich, Chandler Bell, Duncan McIntosh, and Karen Ryan. Council Member Rosansky, Chandler Bell, Duncan McIntosh, Karen Ryan. Council Member Webb, Chandler Bell, Karen Ryan, Douglas West. Council Member Gardner, Richard Reyna, Karen Ryan, Douglas West. Council Member Daigle, Duncan McIntosh, Karen Ryan, Douglas West. Mayor Pro Tem Hen, Duncan McIntosh, Karen Ryan, Douglas West. And Mayor Curry, Chandler Bell, Karen Ryan, Douglas West. And hold on one moment. So it's like two in at a time. Karen Ryan and Douglas West, and then there will be a second vote for Chandler Bell and Duncan McIntosh. We will do that after I complete the rest of the commissions. Next is Parks, Beaches, and Recreation. The council members voted for two. Council Member Selich, Tom Anderson, Ron Cole. Council Member Rosansky, Tom Anderson, Jack Tingley. Council Member Webb, Tom Anderson, Ron Cole. Council Member Gardner, Tom Anderson, Jack Wu. Council Member Daigle, Tom Anderson, Ron Cole. Mayor Pro Tem Hen, Tom Anderson, Ron Cole. And Mayor Curry, Tom Anderson, and Ron Cole. Tom Anderson and Ron Cole are appointed to the Parks, Beaches, and Recreation Commission. For Planning Commission, Council Members voted for one. Council Member Selich, Stephen Coyne. Council Member Rosansky, Stephen Coyne. Council Member Webb, Fred Amari. Council Member Gardner, Fred Amari. Council Member Daigle, Fred Amari. Mayor Pro Tem Hen, Stephen Coyne. Mayor Curry, Fred Amari. And Council has appointed Fred Amari. And then we'll do a second vote for the Harbor Kish Commission between Chandler Bell and Duncan McIntosh only. Vote for one, please. For Harbor Commission, Council Member Rosansky, Duncan McIntosh. Council Member Selich, Duncan McIntosh. Council Member Daigle, Duncan McIntosh. Council Member Gardner, Duncan McIntosh. Council Member Webb, Chandler Bell. Mayor Pro Tem Hen, Duncan McIntosh. Mayor Curry, Chandler Bell, Duncan McIntosh has been appointed to the Harbor Commission. Okay, thank you and congratulations to all who were appointed and uh, thank you to all who applied and I think Mayor Pro Tem uh, Hinn's comments about uh, applying next time given uh, uh, sort of uh, the competition here uh, were well taken and I hope that you will continue to be involved in the city and we look forward to your ongoing participation. Can, can I just, I've been on the committee yes. a, a number of times and we get a written application and just that's the first cut. And so many times people say, well, I want to serve the city, and that's great. We, we, we appreciate that. But if you're really interested, if you could tell us 
why this particular committee or commission, what you bring to it and why you're really interested in it, that really helps us evaluate it in much a more logical way than if you just we're trying to do it on the basis of a bunch of people who say they'd like to serve and we only know their names perhaps. So the more detail you can give us on it, it would really help. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, just for the record, that with respect to the Planning Commission uh, appointment pursuant to your previous vote, Fred Amari will be considered appointed and qualified effective August 1st. Correct. Okay. Uh, the next item is S26, the Hogue Agreement. It's been proposed to continue this to July 27. Is there anyone in the audience who uh, would like to speak on this tonight? All right, seeing none, is there a motion? Mr. Brzezanski. Uh, uh, I think there's... Oh, sorry, I voted on the motion already. I think there's been great progress, but they still need a little bit more time, so I uh, move that we ex uh, continue it. Second. Okay. Further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, we're now ready for the main event, item S27, which is the uh, adoption of the 2010-11 budget. Mr. Kiff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Uh, you spent a, a good two hours on the main event, or maybe an hour and 45 minutes this afternoon, so I'm uh, thankfully not going to go through the presentation again. We, you did at um, the study session straw vote some items. We've updated the charts to reflect that. We've also provided you a, a little bit of additional information, uh, specifically regarding to reclassifications. That would now go into the record. This shows what the salaries were, what the salaries are headed towards in the new classification. Some are down, um, but, but not all. <laughs> um, and I, I just remind folks that in the ERIP, we did propose this concept where some jobs would be merged into others and some people would be taking on additional duties with the expectation that arguably those additional duties would require them to, would obligate us to pay them more money. I know Council Member Daigle had a question of the utilities director, I believe, about the senior utilities specialist positions. Uh, Mr. Murdoch is here in the audience, and I would welcome other questions in advance of running through the uh, checklist items again. Why don't we start uh, with Council Member Daigle, if you had specific questions you'd like to ask at this point. Um, it it seems as if what, at least according to the report, that these um, utility technicians, we're now going to call them senior, and they're going to get a, a pay increase. And I don't know, it just kind of seems like a salary increase. And I, I don't really understand. Maybe you can explain it to me. Sure. Um, good evening, Mayor, members of Council, George Murdoch, Utilities Director. Um, as part of the Early Retirement Incentive Program, we had a couple of opportunities. One was reduce the number of total staff in the department by six and a half folks. Um, also, we down, we, we classed downwards, which isn't really in the staff report, where we took, um, eliminated a division and we actually downclassed the utilities supervisor to a crew chief level, and then took two crew chiefs and downgraded them to the, our entry level, which is utility specialist. That created about 21 entry-level positions, and what we saw is that we had individuals with no experience coming into the, the utilities department with minimal state certification and um, operating these large, heavy pieces of equipment such as vectors or doing our underground service alerts, for instance. So we wanted a mid-level position. We called it a senior level. We, we increased the level of state certification required by the um, health department and then required them to have a Class A or B license so they could be responsible for this heavy vehicle. So basically reduced the number of chiefs. We have some more Indians, but we needed a little bit more, we needed a mid-level person that's um, responsible for that vehicle and has higher certification. At the end of the day, what happened is we first in, we anticipated through all those changes that we could save about $365,000 in salary savings. As it ends up, we're, we're closer to the $400,000 uh, due to some step increases that were unknown back in December. So we, um, being that there's six divisions with amongst, um, in, in utilities, um, as you mentioned earlier, we're water and wastewater enterprise funded and also general fund for the electrical. Um, I divvied it up and put two seniors, for instance, in our maintenance and repair division, two senior uh, persons um, in our wastewater division, and then gave the responsibilities for our underground service alert um, person that senior title. So it's uh, with the savings that's included, but it's kind of this mid-level person. I had trouble following that. Um, I, guess, <laughs> okay. I guess my question is, are these six people currently doing a job, now we're just going to call them senior, 
and they're going to get more money, or do they, do they have distinctly different job responsibilities? They have distinctively different job respons responsibilities. Perhaps I can explain it this way, another way. The utilities crew chief is the next ranking person from our entry level. The crew chief historically in the past would have a crew chief and a specialist riding in a truck together. We felt that we could save some money by not having one crew chief, because he really doesn't re isn't responsible for a crew, it's just one person. By creating this senior specialist, we could put a senior out with um, another specialist and have a responsible person. So it's a distinctive job responsibility that's different than a specialist and not as high as a crew chief. Okay, so we'll have like a supervisor then in every truck kind of a thing? Uh, no, we have utility supervisor. This is, um, what this is, is 7% higher in pay than our entry level. The entry level requires a minimal one year construction experience. So um, it's difficult to send a crew of two individuals out to replace a water main, for instance, or run a water service that have never worked in the water industry before. The senior position is somebody that has two years of experience, has the California Department of Health Services Distribution 2 certification, so they have a little bit more education, and, and they have the ability to, to lead the other person, the entry-level person, so we don't have to put that supervisor in a truck. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, do you have additional, uh, any other additional re report or comments? Or? Uh, no, unless there are any other questions, we would go through um, this and actually make official vote based on what you discussed at study session and have the items on the screen again. And I've updated the community cash grants chart. Okay. So the first item would be in the recommendation is straw vote. Um, actually, it needs to be the straw vote to change its position control. So that would be the, the first thing to vote on. All right, so the motion here is to change the position, uh, authorized positions, which goes to a plus one position based on this chart, as I understand. Is that correct? That's right. Is there a motion? I move the action. Second. 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 All please vote. So, I'm sorry, what was, what, why has this chart substantially changed? Because the it, assistant it, is now a full. I'm sorry, it hasn't changed since the one you saw this afternoon. The only one that's changed is the community cash grants one. Okay, okay, thank you. We're voting. With Council Member Daigle voting no, the motion carries. Okay, next item, Mr. Kiff. So the next item is indeed updated, reflecting your discussions. For instance, I put the Balboa Island Historical Society at 12, the Improvement Association at 10, CDM Chamber is, um, kept that at 15, then 7, Newport Beach Film Festival at 100, uh, the rest are the same. There's some uncertainty as the marathon, I still have that at 20,000. After, after considering it during the uh, break, I'll support the 20,000. Okay, is there a motion? Uh, um, I'm sorry, yeah, Councilor Gardner. Motion. Sure. Councilor yeah. Gardner. I just, on these ones that, that, that we're approving the money because we've already approved it, I mean, the Ensenada race and that sort of thing, but will we still have this special events committee look at those events for, for the future? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that the next year we're going to have everybody that comes in will have that before we ever get to our budgets? Well, it is the, way it, the way it's headed now, everybody that has an expense to the city of 20000 or more, including in-kind, would go through the Special Events Committee. Okay. But that would be, we would, this would be, that would precede your review, yes. Our review. And remember, that's a change from right what we have right now. We're only sending folks with cash grants of 20000 through. Well, I think that's an excellent idea. Okay. Let me ask the city attorney, do we need to ask for public comment on each of these straw votes or at the point in time we're ready to adopt the sort of modified budget? No, you don't have to ask for it. You've already had your budget, you required budget, budget public hearing last. Okay. Meeting. What are we, are we voting on each one now? That, well, I think now we're voting for the chart as it currently exists with the 20,000 for the marathon and it plus the changes we made I'll earlier. Second that. Uh, okay. It was like, as Councilman Selich proposed, a reduction for... It's reflected. It is, up there. It is reflected. Yeah. Okay. As, we, as is the increase in the film festival. Please vote. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, next item. So the next item is, would be your approval of the budget checklist as amended by the things you just approved. So this actually has not been updated. It's a more complex thing to update, but 
uh, we on staff working with the city clerk uh, will be able to get it right if you were to approve it with that uh, kind of statement. I move we approve the budget checklist as presented. The and as amended. Not, as, as presented and amended. Okay. <laughs> in our various discussions. And fixed. All right, please vote. Motion carries unanimously. So then the next items. Do, do, oh, go ahead. Do any of these require further public comment or I not? Ask the question oh, I'm the sorry. No. I missed it then. Sorry. The next items you could take all at once, which is uh, just for the public's understanding. I, the next one is to uh, authorize the staff to apply an increase in mooring administration costs um, via the new contract, which you also approved tonight, to mooring holders. Then to approve resolution 2010 dash whatever it will be 71. 73 71. 71 adopting the actual budget as amended by the checklist and then the next item there would be to approve revisions to council policy a12 which involves your discretionary grants and direct us to return with revisions to special event policies and then the last item again in this block is to authorize the city manager to appropriate um, to examine fund reserve, fund balance reserve, and um, sorry, this is would be an amendment today to the budget to authorize the appropriation of 175,000 to the Balboa Theater. No questions or no no caveats to that. And then you also discussed at the study session that um, the wayfinding issue would be brought back to you on July 27th, potentially for study session and action after you review that one more time. But again, I think we left the study session such that the Balboa Theater would be funded in the current year's <coughs> budget. But we also wanted to, some, some of us wanted to talk about, um, okay. and, may, and maybe that's a question not for this evening, but for later, but for changing some of the terms to give up some immediacy and have a deadline and that sort of thing. So is that something we don't need to include with the budget? You could include that as a direction to staff saying to come back to you with right. the review of the, the agreement with the. If that, everybody's in agreement with that, I'd, 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 I'd like move all those actions. Well, well, hold on, I have one question. That, uh, <laughs> Um, can you refresh my memory on where the funding at, is at with OASIS? There's a request in the budget. Um, the, the funding for OASIS, uh, well, I think. It's just the personnel, it's, is that, if that's what you're referring to, rather so than construction? Personnel, uh, is there any sort of FF&E or computers? Or uh, you've already approved that. You approved that last month, uh, sorry, last that. meeting. We approved that last meeting. Yeah. Okay, and what was that amount for? That was one plus million of Laura. More than a million. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I second uh, Council. There was a West motion West. and a second. Now this is sort of the omnibus budget action here, so let me just stop here. Are there any members of the public who'd like to speak on this matter? Okay, seeing none, we'll bring it back. Mr. City Attorney. Thank you. If I may, just for clarification regarding the Balboa Theater, if I understand correctly, what you're considering doing is authorizing the amount sought and instructing us to come back with potential uh, milestones uh, in order to amend the lease. May I suggest that it be that you grant this subject to negotiating proper milestones that we can bring back to. Otherwise, we don't have to do that, but otherwise there's technically perhaps no consideration, legally speaking, for entering into a modified agreement. Um, that would just be the most safe way to proceed in a legal manner. That's incorporated in my motion. Well, that, the problem is the timing though, right? Yes, right. So, yeah. that's my problem. And, and you know, right, I'd, I'd like us to be able to be thoughtful about these changes to the lease oh, and, the, okay. and the museum needs to move, or the theater needs to move forward. But so. they don't need to move forward in two weeks. Well, are, are you suggesting that we would be prepared in the, at the next council meeting then? I Which, was shooting for the 27th when Mr. Kiff was saying it would be brought back. but. Uh, uh, or when the other stuff would be brought back. Was yeah, my don't thought, you think that the, having the city having this tacit com commitment is going to help them? I, mean, I don't know. They need the money in their in their budget right then, in their hands. Well, I don't want to cause a budget problem. There's a technical legal issue involved with that. We might be able to find a way to work around it. The best way to solve it is the way I'm suggesting, but we might still be able to find a way if the council's desires to make it clear at this stage. But technically, we won't have any consideration unless we constructed from some other area in order to enter into and revise the lease agreement, um, which may exist somewhere, but I've never seen that lease agreement, so. 
And, and quite honestly, if there's no term or any, I, I question whether there's ongoing consideration, but. Yeah. Well, I have a but question. Even a valid well, lease, yeah. but. Won't, won't the $175,000 item have to come back anyway to the council, at which time we could impose conditions to the actual Actually, grant of the money? This is it. I was suggesting that this be an amendment authorized tonight to the <coughs> current budget, so the answer would be no, yeah. it wouldn't come back. Let, let's face it. They're, we're going to give them the money whether we do the lease right. or not. So I just say give them the money now, as right. much as I hate yeah, to say that. I'll say give them the money now, but we need to come back and have a, a ro more robust discussion about it. And, you know, consideration or not, either the people who we, you know, are on the other side, their board, or, you know, they're going to need to come to the table I, and discuss I, this with us because it's obviously important to more than just a few of the council. And I feel very confident we can arrange for consideration yeah. in the context of that. We'll give them another dollar. How about <laughs> that? Okay. Thank right. you for your patience. The dollar that they're not paying now. <laughs> right. Uh, Mr. Selich? I was just going to say I support giving them the money now. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a consensus uh, measure there. That's what my motion said. Okay, are there any other comments uh, on the whole overall matter? Council Member Dale. Is there another motion after this one? No. Oh, this, this is, is it. it. Okay, well, my only comment as I expressed earlier today, you know, a major concern that I have is, is that our legal costs have more than doubled in three years, and, you know, we're about fiscal sustainability, so I think um, all of us have to work with the city attorney and the city manager arranging those costs. Okay. Good point. Any other comments? I have one just before you vote. Um, I just wanted to thank the, my team that worked on this, including Tracy and Dan. And it was my first budget. It was Tracy's first budget here. So um, it wasn't as smooth as we would have liked, but um, I think um, I really appreciate their hard work. Um, w I think we're improving the process even over last year a little bit, I hope. I'd certainly appreciate your feedback on that. And again, it was a tough year, so uh, you compound that with our uh, relative newness to this, and I just wanted to thank them. Thanks. Well, let me just uh, make a couple of comments to both the, you and Tracy, because while it may have been your first budget, I think it was an outstanding effort. We not only closed an $8 million budget gap for last year, and we did it without drawing down reserves, uh, but we addressed a uh, potential $12 million shortfall in the year in the budget we're now approving uh, without having to tap uh, operational reserves as well. Uh, we did this by substantial reduction in, in workforce, by better efficiency in terms of how we contract for services, by working in partnership with our employee bargaining units and public safety, uh, to have them pick up bigger costs, of bigger portions of their pension costs, and a very important first step for us in controlling pension costs going forward. Uh, we did it through contracting out. We did it through good management. We did it through uh, people really focusing on the job that they do. And I think we also did it in a way that is going to be uh, almost invisible uh, to the people there, uh, uh, people in the community. Uh, we're not cutting back public safety services, fire, lifeguards, uh, and police, that, where people are going to notice those services on the street in terms of their, uh, their daily uh, life. We're not cutting back parks and recreation core services. We're not cutting back library hours. We are so much more blessed uh, to be able to accomplish this and do it all with an $18 million cut in the overall budget than our neighbors. And that is a real uh, tribute to you, David, and to your staff and to Tracy, who have uh, really uh, picked up the load during this budget year. And I know all of us on the council appreciate that effort very, very much. Hey, thank you. And it's also a great tribute to the department heads. And I'm remiss in not thanking them as well for the tough discussions we've had, the tough workshops we've had, where we all sat around the room and helped each other out to um, solve this problem. Again, I think. You put it well, Mr. Curry, about uh, without uh, impacting essential services, but still stretching and certainly stretching our minds about how we can do things better. And, and I think it's important for the public to know that many of our bargaining units, in fact, all of our bargaining units are going without raises, some of them for periods of 12 months, some of them for periods up to 42 months, which, uh, as I think, just is, is a staggering statistic. So any further comments, Mr. Selich? Yeah, I just want to say I appreciate the uh, the approach to the budget this year where we didn't spend a lot of time in the study sessions with the departmental presentations because it really gave me in particular the opportunity to spend more time focusing on the critical areas of the budget and, and you know, dealing with the issues we really had to deal with. So I appreciate that approach. Okay. Seeing no further comments, please vote. Motion carries unanimously. A uh, motion for reconsideration. A motion to reconsider the vote on any action taken by the City Council at either this meeting or the previous meeting may be made 
only by one of the council members who voted with the prevailing side. Is there any motion to re uh, reconsideration? Seeing none, we have two adjournments tonight. We adjourn in memory of Carol Jewell. Uh, Carol was a longtime city resident who passed away on June 14th. She was born in the Hollywood Hills, moved to Newport Beach, and graduated from Newport Harbor High School. She was married to William Jewell, a two-time Olympian who competed in uh, kayaking and in the 1964 and 68 Olympic Games. Carol and William have two sons, Eric and Dietrich. Carol taught at Anderson Elementary School for more than two decades and will be greatly missed by the many students, former students, parents, and colleagues who had the pleasure of knowing her and enjoying her many songs and cheers. Carol was also known for her success in competitive and collegial uh, open water swimming. Uh, she took first place 20 times in her age group at the Waikiki Rough Water Swim and five times at the Shark Fest Swim Series in San Francisco. Uh, Carol Jewell is fondly remembered uh, for the way she enthusiastically embraced life and treasured her roles, her roles as wife, mother, teacher, friend, and of course swimmer. And also, we adjourn tonight in honor of uh, Dorothy Jo Swanson. Just, just before you, oh, I sure, just, I was going to let you do that. Um, go right ahead. I went to high school with Carol, and the term "sunny," sunny disposition, was invented for her. I mean, I used to look at her and think, <laughs> "Why are you so happy?" But that was just she was talking. So she lived in the moment, and she was also so modest. I had the senior for a while, and I saw her a couple years ago. I said, "Oh, are you still swimming?" She's going, oh, "Yeah, I'm still swimming." And that was it. I found out later she held almost every national record you could hold in her age group. But I mean, whereas I would have been going, am I still swimming? <laughs> Let me tell you. Um, I can imagine with her wonderful disposition and enthusiasm and energy that she must have been just a fabulous teacher for her students. They were very lucky to have had her. I can attest to that in that my daughter-in-law taught with her in the next room over at Anderson School. And uh, they were uh, very... Uh, Sad to see her pass and, and that uh, she was a wonderful teacher and thought very highly of in the school. Thank you. <clears throat> in addition, tonight we adjourn in memory of Dorothy Jo Swanson, a city resident for more than six decades who passed away on June 1st. Uh, Dorothy Jo moved to Corona del Mar in 1948 and operated uh, Dorothy Jo's dance studio from 1949 to 1987. She also formed Dorothy Jo's Happy Hoofers, a group of, uh, that performed locally and served as a faculty member at Coastline College and at ADA. Dorothy Jo was a member of the Balboa Bay Club, Newport Beach Country Club, and the Bahia Corinthian Yacht Club. She was preceded in death by her husband of 64 years, Hal Swanson. Hal was also well known in our community because he served as Corona del Mar's first mail carrier. Dorothy Jo is survived by her daughter, Sandra McKay, sons Don Swanson, grandsons Jed and Jake Swanson, and her great-granddaughters, -grand Amy and Casey McKay. Dorothy Jo was an institution. She taught, I don't know, a number of generations. Step, shuffle, ball, change. <laughs> you know, we all learned it from Dorothy Jo. She also had something called Swingsters, which was cotillion light. That was when we all first learned, all the girls learned that the cutest boys weren't always the best dancers. But uh, she danced right up practically to the end. Just uh, a testament for how good dancing is for you, I think. So, um, so many dance teachers today were her students. She really has left a, a dance legacy for our community. Thank you. We are adjourned.